After studying this module, you shall be able to know the proportion of population with disability, learning about the health conditions of disabled people, identify needs of people with disability and causes of disability, evaluate the various intervention programs for supporting people with disability, analyze the upcoming future of disabled older people. Introduction to Disability we have discussed the explosion of population and various issues of older people in previous chapters. Disability is another very important issue which requires a lot of attention from researchers, policy makers for quality of life of older people. First of all, it is important to understand what is disability. When key factors restricting the ability of an individual from performing the activities of daily living or for taking part in workforce or in managing his environment independently due to illness or injury is known as disability. Here it is also important to understand the difference between impairment, disability and handicap. Impairment is a loss or abnormality of psychological, physiological or anatomical structure or function. However, disability is any restriction or lack of ability to perform an activity in the manner or within the range considered normal for a human being or it is a loss of health that is the functioning capacity in a set of health domain. The functioning capacity in a set of health domain such as mobility, cognition, hearing and vision. Handicap resulting from impairment or disability which prevents the fulfillment of a role that is considered normal depending on age, sex, social and cultural factors for that individual. There are some people who have early onset of disability such as a person who is blind by birth and other is the disability which a person may acquire with the increase in age. The disability with age may enter in life of a person because of chronic ailment, surgery, accident or cognitive disability due to chemical imbalance. Demography of aging with disability the population of people with disability is increasing because of higher life expectancy, medical advancement and low morbidity. In Southeast Asia, the prevalence of disability ranges from 1.5 to 21.3% of total population, depending on definition and severity of disability. Despite the increase in prevalence of disability worldwide due to various reasons, not much attention has been paid to the issues of older people with disability. The WHO estimates that 10% of world's population has some form of disability, 20% of those aged 70 plus and 50% of those aged 85 plus. That means group of aged people which are increasing as per the estimate of population growth is suffering more than disability. Also in views of WHO, disability among old people begin after the age of 70 years and above and despite of it, worldwide prevalence very little focus is paid on its evaluation, prevention, care and disabled and prevention and care of disabled older people. In India, prevalence rate of disability is quite low when compared to Austria, UK and other industrialized countries. As per the census 2001, there are 21 crore, 90 lakh, 67,000, 6,900 people are disabled in India. It constitutes 2.13% of total population, but the population size is very high, although the percentage is very small. Data shows that among them, 12 crore, 60 lakh, 56,000 are males and 93 crore 1134 females and this include person with visual hearing, speech, locomotor and mental dis disabilities. In India state that highest disability is in Chandigarh and Andhra Pradesh. Assam is lowest in rate of disabilities. Now let's discuss the common causes of disability in old age. Chronic diseases, injuries, mental impairment, malnutrition, HIV, AIDS and other communicable diseases 
are the most common cause of disability among older people. The major chronic ailments include cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, stroke, diabetes, cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, muscular skeletal conditions including arthritis and osteoporosis, mental health conditions such as dementia, depression and blindness, visual impairment, these all are the factors behind disabilities. Sometimes injuries can be due to accident or road on road, conflicts, falls, landmines also cause disability. Certain chronic conditions are particularly related to disability, include stroke, diabetes, cognitive impairment, arthritis, visual impairment. Mental health problems, especially depression, can cause disability because the person usually lives in isolation and excessive intake of smoke, alcohol lead to osteoarthritis, alcohol abuse and lung diseases in elderly. The disability rate in India is expected to increase rapidly during 1990-2020 due to non-communicable diseases and injuries. It is predicted that communicable diseases reduce to nearly half from 1990 to 2020. However, there will be an increase of 40% in non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular and stroke. Half the disability rate from non-communicable disease for South Asia are estimated to be due to neuropsychiatric disorders, mainly mental illness and mental retardations. Mental disability usually occur in childhood. However, visual disability increases with increase in age. In old age, people suffer from cataracts, glaucoma and other visual problems. In the absence of timely treatment, it causes visual impairment in old age. Similarly, hearing impairment is also very prevalent in old age. In the absence of awareness and social stigma, people avoid accepting the hearing difficulties and use of hearing aids as a solution of the problem. Government is running awareness campaigns and free checkup camps for dealing with visual and hearing disabilities. Locomotor and speech disabilities usually occur in younger ages. Now let's discuss the gender differences in disability. Feminization of aging we have already discussed in previous chapters. The women elderly outnumber men elderly all across the world. In disability too, women suffer more from disability as compared to men. Some trends are found in UK, Canada, Spain, Mexico, Netherlands. Older women population is marked with illiteracy, poverty and dependence worldwide. Combine combination of these factors with longevity result into higher number of disabled older female. Researches done by Murray and R. Cray shows the exception. They found that in sub-Saharan Africa, severe disability is associated with higher rates of mortality among both men and women. However, in most of the countries of the world, women survive longer than men and suffer more from disability. Let's discuss the poverty with disability. There is a strong relationship between poverty and disability. Poverty is highly associated with lower levels of education, unhygienic and unsafe environment, less awareness of disability, poor management of disease and malnutrition. All these factors make poor people more vulnerable to disability. Common micronutrients deficiencies that affect disability include deficiency of vitamin A which causes blindness, deficiency of vitamin B, B which causes beriberi and also pellagra and other skin disorders, anemia. Similarly, deficiency of vitamin D, it causes rickets. Deficiency of iodine less is related to slowing down of growth, learning difficulties, intellectual disabilities and quieter. Iron deficiency causes anemia which affect learning and activity and is a significant cause of maternal mortality. Calcium deficiency, it causes osteoporosis in old age. 
and it is very common. Also countries who are comparatively less developed found to have poor health services and sanitation which can cause disability. Jagger et al. in 2007 found that people who are less educated, suppose they have 9 years of education, in UK they found they are suffering from disability than higher educated people. Recent World Bank studies contended that half a billion disabled people are undisputedly amongst the poorest of the poor are estimated to comprise 15 to 20 percent of the poorest in developing countries. Third rank ranked cause of disability is accidents or injuries. Asia Pacific region commonly found disabilities due to accidents and paraplegia, brain damage and behavioral disorders. They are some common disabilities among survivors of traffic accidents. Health status and disability. Health status of disabled people varies with the type and severity of disability. Old age is already associated strongly with poor health status. Disability further intensify the health conditions of older people. The health condition of aging people with early onset of disability and older people with late onset of disability are identified in various literatures showed lot of difference between the two groups. Special situations of aging population within early onset disability may include the early onset of disability which weakens the functional capacity of the individual, they require care particularly residential care, the community services and facilities are not prepared as per the requirements of people with disability. That is why such services are beyond their reach. They cannot participate in community activities without assistance. Another is older people with an intellectual or learning disability are more likely to have low levels of education. It is harder to get a job for disabled person in our community. Also, they are not provided with an equal opportunity to participate in all jobs. Many of disabled people have never been married and hence have no spouse or children. Family members provide most informal support to older people with a late onset disability. However, those relying on informal support from aged parents or caregivers are at risk of losing their support. And when they reach in old age with disability, there is no one around them to provide informal care. That is why they are more likely to live in residential care and less likely to live alone or live with their families. Most of them have poor social networks outside the family or their place of residence. As an effect of long-term placement in residential care, they lack capacity to engage in community activities. Their participation in community recreational activities or leisure activities is negligible. Disabled people lack good communication skills also. They find it difficult to express their needs or in cases of profound disability, they require assistance to identify their needs also. They are more likely to have participated in supported employment. For those who have been in supported employment, this may have not only provided occupation throughout their adult life, but also have been the main source of their lifelong social relationship. They are much less likely to be homeowner and dependent on pensions. Thus, while older people share common problems, people with lifelong disabilities are likely to have some additional disadvantages. Let's discuss policies and guidelines for people with disability. There are several laws framed by the government to protect the right of disabled people in India. One is Mental Health Act 1987, Rehabilitation Council of India Act 1992, Persons with Disabilities Act 1995 and the National Trust Act 1999. According to the Mental Health Act 1987, this act came into effect in all the states and union territories of India in April 1993. 
This act consolidated and amended the law for providing better treatment and care to mentally ill persons and the government right to make better provision for their property and affairs. The objective of the act include regulate admission to psychiatric hospitals or psychiatric nursing homes of mentally ill persons who do not have sufficient understanding to seek treatment on a voluntary basis and to protect the rights of such persons. Another is regulate responsibility for maintenance charges of mentally ill persons who are admitted to psychiatric hospitals or psychiatric nursing homes. Another reason is provide facilities for establishing guardianship or custody of mentally ill person who are incapable of managing their own affairs. Another important aspect is provide the establishment of central authority and state authorities for mental health services. Regulate the powers of government for establishing, licensing and controlling psychiatric hospitals and psychiatric nursing homes for mentally ill persons. Provide legal aid to mentally ill person or state expense in certain cases. Protect society from the presence of mentally ill persons who have become or might become a danger or nuisance to others. Another is protect citizens from being detained in psychiatric hospitals or psychiatric nursing homes without sufficient cause. In 2002, the act was implemented in 25 out of 30 states and union territories. As per the provision of Mental Health Act 1987, each state is required to constitute a state mental health authority to ensure effective and equitable enforcement of the provision of the Act. The primary role of the SMHA is in planning, implementation and monitoring of mental health programs or activities. The Rehabilitation Council of India Act 1992. This Act sets out to regulate the training of professionals in rehabilitation and sets out a framework for a central rehabilitation register. Specially, it sets out training policies and programs to standardize the training courses for professionals dealing with persons with disability, to grant recognition to the institutions running these training courses, to maintain a central rehabilitation, register of the rehabilitation professionals, to promote research in rehabilitation and special education. In order to give statutory powers to the council for carrying out its duties effectively and the Rehabilitation Council of India Act was passed by Parliament, which came into force with effect from 1993. The amendment in the Act in 2000 gave the additional responsibility of promoting research to the Council. The major functions of the Council include the recognition of qualifications granted by universities in India for rehabilitation professionals and also the recognition of qualification by institutions outside India. The Person with Disability Act 1995. This Act provides 3% reservations for disabled people in poverty ele elevation program, government posts and in state educational facilities as well as other rights and entitlements. The specific objective of the Act are prevention and early detection of disabilities, education, employment, affirmative actions, non-discrimination, research and manpower development, recognition and institutions for persons with disability, institution for persons with severe disability, the chief commissioner and commissioners for persons with disability, social security. A study conducted by Disability Knowledge and Research Group in India assessed the impact of this act and tried to evaluate its implications. It was found that those eligible had difficulties in obtaining disability certificates, benefit entitlements varied across the India and that only 3% had received monetary support from the government on a regular basis. The National Trust for Welfare of Persons with Autism, Cerebral Palsy, Mental Rehabilitation and Multiple Disabilities Act 1999. This act provides for the constitution 
of a national body for the welfare persons with autism, cerebral palsy, mental retardation and multiple disabilities. The main objectives are to enable and empower persons with disability to live as independent and as fully as possible within and as close to the community to which they belong. To strengthen facilities to provide support to persons with disability to live within their own families. To extend support to registered organizations to provide need based services during the period of crisis in the family of persons with disability. To deal with problems of persons with disability who do not have family support. National Policy for Persons with Disability Act 2005 The national policy released in February 2006 recognizes that persons with disabilities are valuable human resources for the country and seeks to create an environment that provides them equal opportunities, protection of their rights and full participation in society. Its aim is to ensure better coordination between various wings of the state and central government. The focus of the policy is on the following points. Prevention of disability, rehabilitation measures, physical rehabilitation strategies, counseling and medical rehabilitation, early detection and intervention. In addition to the legal framework, extensive infrastructure has been developed in India for disabled people under this act and includes the establishment of the following institutions. Institute for Physically Handicapped in New Delhi, National Institute of Visually Handicapped Dehradun, National Institute for Orthopedically Handicapped Kolkata, National Institute for Mentally Handicapped Sikandrabad, National Institute for Hearing Handicapped Mumbai, National Institute of Rehabilitation, Training and Research Katak, National Institute for Empowerment of Persons with Multiple Disabilities Chennai. In addition to these parliamentary acts, India draws support from international bodies to complement the legal framework. It is a signatory to the Declaration on the Full Participation and Equality of People with Disabilities in the Asia-Pacific region. The Bico Millennium Framework for Action Toward an Inclusion, Barrier-Free and Right-Based Society. And India is currently participating in the negotiations on the UN Conventions on Protection and Promotion of Rights and dignity of persons with disability. Disability and Rehabilitation WHO Action Plan 2006-2011 Documents provides the overview of WHO's future plan of activities which will be carried out or coordinated by the disability and rehabilitation teams located in the Department of Injuries and Violence Prevention in the Non-Communicable Disease and Mental Health. One of the four strategic areas of the Bebikova Millennium Framework is the development of the national system of disability related data collection and analysis and the establishment of definition of disability which would enable internationally comparable analysis. It, its 2004 survey in India revealed the following limited information on the definition of disability, limited information on access to education to disabled people, no mention on disability in the Indian constitution, no standardized sign language. The management and treatment of disability. The various organizations such as WHO, UNESCO and international labor, or labor organization used different approaches to deal with problems of disability. WHO is working in the area of medical rehabilitation. UNESCO is promoting inclusive strategies in education for people with disability. ILO is opening gates for disabled people in work sector. And UNICEF is trying to prevent it in children through immunization. The organizations who are working in the field of reformation are adopting different approaches to deal with the issues of disability. The main reason for the absence of holistic care and treatment program is the absence of people 
with disability in decision making and policy formation programs. Overall burden of disability in India is 20.9%. But the proportion of expenditure on programs for people with disability is less than 1% in 1990. And surprisingly, there was a reduction in the expenditure from 2001 to 2006 from 0.07% to 0.04% of total allocation in the budget for people with disability. It shows the indifferent attitude of the government toward disability. At present, healthcare provisions are focusing on outpatient departments in from various institutes working for treatment, rehabilitation, education of disabled people. Through outreach services, communities are sensitized on early identification, prevention, intervention and rehabilitation of the disabled. Technical know-how and information are also provided to NGOs on infrastructure requirements for establishing service centers for disabled people. Let's discuss gaps to be filled in in treatment of disability. One is surveillance system. There is a big gap in the actual population of people with disability and the data available to the government. There are several reasons for underreported cases of disability. One of the biggest reason is lack of comprehensive definition of disability because of which people have different opinion on disability and discrepancies found in conceptualization of the term disability. Second reason is the social stigma which is attached to disability. People shy to report it. Third big reason is lack of national level registrations and identification system for people with disability. Another point is care system. There is a need to develop a care system at primary and secondary level for people with disability. A systematic and organized system is required for management and treatment through various types of community-based rehabilitation services. An evidence-based care system should be developed and guidelines should be formed to provide diagnosis, treatment plans, understanding of causes and preventive measures for better management of disability. Coordination of research programs. Several NGOs like Manovikas Kendra in West Bengal, Handicapped Development Foundation Manipur, Mobility India Uttar Pradesh, Disability India Network DIN, Disability India for Information Resources DIIR, conducting research activities on disability. There is a need to identify, coordinate such organizations and actively involve them in policy formulation, planning, implementation, monitoring of disability in India. In summary, the estimated cases of disability are higher than reported because of lack of national registration policy, inadequate awareness and social stigma. Along with feminization of aging, there is feminization of disability among older people. Poverty is highly correlated with disability. The needs and issues of older people with disability are different from older people without disability. There is a lack of positive and supportive attitude of government toward people with disability. Although there are few national level programs run by government for people with disability, but they are inadequate and insufficient. A lot need to be done to provide an inclusive environment to people with disability.